All right, everybody, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Dina Carter, and I am the Canvas Recruitment Manager for the FDM Group. I'm going to take some time today to speak with you about virtual interviewing. Because of the situation that we're in right now, um, nobody is really interviewing in person. So everybody's sort of having to shift and pivot a little bit to a new virtual format of interviewing. So just wanting to go over some things with you, some tips and tricks so that you can be successful um, in your next virtual interview. So today we're going to go um, over quite a few things. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit in the beginning about what we do at FDM Group. Then we're going to get into how to prepare for an interview. So this information is going to be general and is going to be applicable to any interview format, uh, whether it be virtual or, or in person. Then we're going to talk specifically about details on how to prepare for your virtual interview, some tips and tricks to know during the interview, and then we're going to go into some follow-up and reflection after the interview, and I will leave some time for questions at the end if you have any. Um, so who are we? At FDM, we are the market leader in the recruitment, training, and deployment of IT professionals across the globe. We have 10 centers around the world. We're traded on the London Stock Exchange, um, and our headquarters in the U.S. is uh, in New York City. Um, our global headquarters is in London, England, and then we've got 10 centers around the world in the USA, UK, Canada, Germany, Hong Kong, Singapore, and also in Australia now. Um, so what we do, in a nutshell, we employ recent college graduates, military veterans, and individuals looking to return to work after taking a break. So think um, stay-at-home moms, for example. Um, we put them through about a 12 to 16 week training program. And after that's over, we place them on site with a client to actually do what we've trained them to do. Um, so what we do at FDM is, is sort of eliminate that catch-22 of after you graduate, you don't maybe don't have experience in your field um, we're going to give you some additional training after you graduate and then also give you that first two years of experience that you need on the job to sort of launch your career in the way that you want to um, so our selection process um, we've always done video interviewing so that's not something new uh, at fdm but because of the new environment that we are in we have had to take our in-person interview days and move them to a more virtual format. So um, you'll see in the center of your screen, we have always done video interviews. And this is something where um, you as the candidate would be on the other end of the video. The computer would prompt you for a question. It would give you about 30 seconds to prep for that question. And then you're going to record yourself answering that question. Um, for our interview days, so those are going to be our in-person, typically our in-person days. Um, we do both strength-based and technical interviews, and um, now we're carrying those out fully virtually, so doing those via Zoom and Skype um, to make sure that we're still able to, to accomplish our recruitment goals going into the summer. Okay, so starting the uh, pre-interview research. Um, I think everybody knows that if you're going into an interview, um, you wanna make sure that you do some research on the company that you're interviewing with. The typical method of doing this is going to the company's website, taking a look around, looking at their careers page, their about me page. Um, something that I would recommend in this area is making sure that you're looking at their social media pages. Specifically Twitter, I think is the most uh, useful for this. This way you can see what's currently going on in the organization. Have they made any recent acquisitions? Have they done anything recently? Um, have they received any awards? What's going on with them now? That way, when you go into the interview, you know the current events and things that are happening in that organization. And if they're brought up, you can you can call them to mind, um, or you can bring them up on your own and talk about how excited you know you are to be a part of those things. Um, next, you want to make sure that you look at the job descriptions um, for similar positions. So when you're applying for a job, the the position that you're applying for. Um, will have a specific set of qualifications. But if you want to look at that sort of holistically, you can pull up jobs that are similar to that job, maybe with other organizations, and see what types of skills and experience they require. Because while a job description is a good, gives you a good idea of the skills and experience that's required for a position, it's not an all-encompassing 
um, document. So there may be skills and, and different qualifications that a company might think are really nice to have from a candidate. They just may not be something that made it into that final job description. So if you're able to look at similar positions and find um, different knowledge, skills, and abilities that you might have, um, you can bring those into your interview um, question answers and those types of things when you're interviewing um, to make you an even better candidate for the role. Um, you want to review the interview agenda that they send you. So typically, if you're going into an interview where um, it may be a longer interview, you might be interviewing for a few hours with a few different people, the recruiter is going to send you a document that shows what time you're interviewing and the names of the individuals that you'll be interviewing with. Make sure that you review that, make sure that you know who those individuals are, and then I would recommend taking an additional step and going and looking those people up on LinkedIn. Um, so do some research on them. Maybe you have, maybe they went to your alma mater, maybe they're also Virginia Tech graduates. Um, maybe you have different things in common with them uh, that you wouldn't have known prior to looking them up on LinkedIn before going into the interview. So um, you do that as an opportunity to sort of build that relationship with your interviewer in the interview um, to be able to maybe pull in some, some common uh, interests that you have. Um, you want to make sure that you review your resume for the interview. So I could do an entire other presentation on um, resumes. However, for this purpose, um, I want to share that what you should be doing when you're applying for jobs is customizing your resume to every job that you're applying for. So you want to make sure that the resume that you have in front of you for this particular role is the resume that you actually submitted for the role. So um, wanting to make sure that there's consistency there. So if, if they ask you questions and, and want you to maybe walk them through your resume or something, you have the same copy of the resume that you submitted for the job in front of you as they have in front of them. Um, so pretty basic information here. Make sure that you're going through and answering common questions that you'll anticipate that you'll be asked. So you can go to Google and, and just Google common interview questions um, and make sure that you run through those a couple times to compose some, some answers to those. You don't have to memorize your answers, um, but that will get your brain sort of working um, in thinking up and thinking on your feet uh, how to answer those questions. And we'll also go over some common interview questions um, in a moment here. Um, the other thing that you want to prepare, which is a pretty common thing, and I think most people know that this is a part of the interview process, um, but it does seem to get overlooked when preparing for an interview, is making sure that you prepare your elevator pitch. Um, and the reason that I mention this is because one of the most common interview questions that you're asked is, tell me about yourself. So, most interviews that I've ever been on in my life, most interviews that I've conducted in my life, um, the very first question I ask in an interview is tell me about yourself. And at this point, usually this is at the beginning of the interview, if you don't have an answer composed to this question, it can really throw you off for the rest of the interview. So you wanna make sure that you know how you want to answer this. What do you want to tell your interviewer about yourself? There's a billion different ways of answering answering this. You're, and in different life situations, you're going to answer this question differently. So you want to make sure that you know in this environment of an interview um, how you want to answer, tell me about yourself. So my recommendations for this are to keep it short, um, no longer than really 30 seconds, and make sure that you're including information pertaining to the position. Um, so anything that is anything that you want your interviewer to know outside of what's on your resume or maybe in addition to what's on your resume, um, this is the time to bring that up. You want to keep this information professional, so you don't want to be telling them necessarily about outside interests or what your life outside of work entails, um, those types of things. Uh, make sure you're doing sort of a um, overview of your education and your experience and the things that make you qualified for this role. Um, and what so a, a good way of sort of composing this is to compose it in a way where you're thinking of what brought you to this point in your career. Um, so what brought you sitting in front of this interviewer today? And that's sort of what you want to tell the interviewer. Um, and another thing that you want to think about is it's really easy, especially if you haven't prepared for this position, to sort of go through line by line on your resume and sort of talk about, you know, where you started your education, where you finished it, what your, what your work experience has been, and those types of things. Um, 
and you don't want to do that because the interviewer already has your resume. So there's no point in sort of re going over um, all the information they already have. What you want to think of this is, is as more of a cover letter. So what can you sort of add to um, the information that's on the resume to be able to make a good impact, especially at the onset of an interview um, with a question like, tell me about yourself. So make sure that you're thinking of this more of a cover letter and more um, as complementary information to what's on your resume. All right, so a few other um, ways to prepare for interview questions. And again, this is just blanket information. This doesn't necessarily pertain solely to virtual interviews, but sort of overall. Um, make sure that you're evaluating your strengths. What are you good at? Do you know that? If you don't know that, you may want to make sure that you list out what your top three strengths are um, and why. Why do you consider these your strengths and when have you used them in, in the past? Um, while you may not be asked the question, you know, what is your biggest strength in an interview, um, you may be asked questions, um, more behavioral questions about situations that you have or um, situations that you've been in where you had to perform a certain way. And by listing out the strengths and then, and then listing out the examples, it'll make those situations a lot easier to um, sort of call to mind in the interview process. Um, you want to consider experiences that have impacted you professionally. Um, so list the three most important experiences you've had either in your education or in your work experience and why those experiences have the biggest impact on you. Again, in those behavioral questions, um, having these sort of examples sort of in the back of your mind or what I would say, you know, have all of this in your in your backpack so that when somebody asks for something, you're able to sort of pull it out. Um, and it's not something that you're sort of fumbling around for or answers that you can't call to mind. Um, you sort of have all this in the back of your mind. And then you also want to talk talk about or think about what skills you've gained or improved on in the last year or two or three years. Um, the reason that you want to think about this is because if if you're asked about your greatest weakness or if you're asked a question that's sort of around that, around something that um, you may not do so well or, or something along those lines, you'll be able to talk about the, these skills that you've gained. So maybe you weren't really great at um, at prioritizing your work initially when you took on your first internship. But through that process, you really learned how um, to prioritize and to time management and to organize your day um, through that process. So it's not necessarily a weakness of yours now, but it is something that you acknowledged that you needed to work on and you actively took steps to improve upon it. Okay, so we'll go through, through some common interview questions here. Um, what is your greatest accomplishment? Uh, what is your approach to solving problems? Uh, what is your greatest strength? So we touched on that a bit. Um, why should we hire you? So what sets you apart from other candidates? And what about your background and experience is unique? What is your greatest weakness? We also touched on that one a bit. And tell me about a time when. These are those behavioral questions um, that you'll be asked. So tell me about a time when you made a mistake or tell me about a time when you um, had a conflict with a colleague and how you worked to resolve that. Uh, make sure that you're prepared for those types of questions as well. And then the tell me about your, yourself question, which I can't st stress enough. Um, make sure that you have an answer uh, for that question composed. Okay, so specific to a video interview, um, these are things that you're going to want to prepare a day in advance. So make sure that you're, if you're using Skype or if you're using a system that requires you to have some sort of ID, um, that is a professional Skype ID. So it's your first name, last name, and a bunch of numbers or something along those lines. Um, I know you're probably the generation of when creating a Skype ID. You might have been in high school or middle school. Um, so, you know, if you were using maybe a sports team in, in the title of your Skype ID or something like that, um, it's it's time to change that now, um, now that we're using it for more interviews. Um, so just make sure that that you have a professional ID uh, ready to go and ready to provide to a recruiter. Uh, make sure you test the 
interview link that you've been sent and then the computer audio and video. So um, you definitely want to sit down, click the link, even if the room is locked. So I know Zoom sort of blocks rooms before the host opens them up. Even if you can't get into the room, you can still click on it and it'll allow you to test your audio to make sure that um, make sure that sound is coming out of your computer or your headset and that the mic um, is being recognized. So definitely things you want to do um, a day ahead of time. Um, you also want to make sure that you elevate your laptop or webcam. Um, mine is elevated on a box right now. I'll show it to you just in a couple minutes to, um, so that you can see sort of what it looks like when I'm elevated and I'm able to look directly into the camera versus um, when I'm sort of looking down um, into the camera. Um, and just sort of makes the angle look professional and it looks like you're sort of sitting face to face with somebody. Um, you want to ensure the lighting is in front of you and your background is neutral. So um, this is this is really important. The lighting is really important and where you have your camera positioned um, is going to help make the best impression. Uh, we'll go in just a moment and I'll walk you over to my window so that I'll show you what sort of different lighting looks like. Um, and I know that you're you're part of the selfie generation and so you may have even more experience um, with setting things up so the lighting is correct um, more than I do. Um, but just want to give you an idea of what it can look like if you're lit from different angles um, and what makes the best impression. Um, another thing in preparing for this is that you want to take advantage of the fact that this is a virtual interview and it's not um, in person. And so you can use notes, you can use things to help you remember what you want to say and what, um, how you want to portray yourself and have reminders posted for yourself. So um, you can place post-its around your laptop and around sort of the area that your computer is sitting in. Um, so that you can have reminders for yourself or have questions for your interviewer posted or um, just a reminder up near the camera to smile um, can be really helpful in sort of helping you portray, you know, a very professional image. Um, you also want to have a copy of your resume and a pen and paper in front of you. So I think I mentioned it before, but just making sure that you have a copy of your resume um, that you submitted for this particular role in front of you so that if they ask you, you know, I've been in interviews where they've asked, you know, walk me through, walk me through your resume um, or, you know, tell me about your experience with this job. What was your favorite thing? What was your least favorite thing? Having that in front of you is going to be really helpful so that you know sort of what to say and what sort of order to to walk your interviewer through. Um, and then the pen and paper is going to be so that you can take notes. Um, and then we'll get into that a little bit further in the presentation. So um, I'm going to take you on a little bit of a field trip right now. I'm going to take you. So I am sitting, um, I have a window in front of me. Um, so, so in looking at me, I'm sort of lit from the front. So I'm going to walk you over there so I can show you um, what it looks like where you can be lit from a different angle and how that can sort of impact it. So when I get closer to the to the window, you can see how much that sort of washes me out um, and is not necessarily as professional of a of an image as I as I was giving before where I was a little bit further away. Now if I turn to the side, you'll see this side is completely shadowed. Um, so if you're sitting in the inner and your window is to the side of you, you're going to be really shadowed on the other side. And then certainly if I turn around and my window is behind me, I'm completely in the dark. So you can see how this sort of Im would impact an interview if you were set up like this um, before the interview. So you really want to take the opportunity to make sure that this is set up and that you're lit from the front and so you're giving the best image of yourself that you can give. So again, if I turn this way, you'll see that sort of lighting um, change again, but I will take you back to my desk now. And I'll show you that when I sit down, so this is my sort of computer setup here, and I have my computer set up on a cardboard box so that I'm sort of being able to look at you straight on. If I take it off the cardboard box, now I'm looking down at you, right? So the angle's a little bit different, the feel of, of this is a little bit different, um, and this is all my computer's just sitting on right now, just so that I can prop you up a little, um, and that way we can talk face to face, essentially. Yeah. So that would I. This is what I would say is the best sort of setup um, that I have available to me in in my in my home office. Okay. 
Okay, so um, for your video interview, um, these are things that you can prepare day of. So make sure that you dress professionally. I think that that goes without saying, but um, really, I mean, as you can see, if, if we were in a, in a virtual interview right now, you'd really only be seeing me from my neck up. So um, making sure that you have maybe a suit jacket on, a nice sweater, um, something along those lines is is going to be perfectly fine. If you want to get in your full internet suit, sometimes that can help. It can help you sort of play the part and feel professional and portray yourself in a professional way. So I would never discourage anybody in, an, in a video interview from putting on sort of their full interview suit or if you're a, if you're a female putting on a skirt and a nice blouse or if you're a man putting you know your suit and tie on. Um, and being sort of dressed to the nines for the virtual interview, even though someone's not going to really see you from the shoulders down, but it can help you portray yourself in a more professional way. Um, again, day of, check the lighting. So you might set things up the day before, but just make sure that on that day you check the lighting. You can even use your cell phone if you don't want to use the link to the um, to the interview room, um, just take your cell phone, set things up and like pull up your camera just like this and um, see what you look like on your cell phone camera. Because if it's raining or if it's gloomy or maybe you set your stuff up in the evening but your interview is during the day. So um, now you have natural lighting versus, um, you know, maybe you had all, all your lights on in the evening when you set things up. Uh, make, just make sure that you're checking it uh, on the day of. You want to remove kids, pets, and other distractions from the room. Obviously, um, we're in a very unique place right now, um, so people seem to be really understanding. You know, I have a I have children that are running around outside of my home office right now, um, and um, in meetings and different things, people tend to hear them running, screaming, jumping. Um, and I think, you know, at this point, if, if they do hear a dog bark in the background or something, it's not going to be as big of a deal. I think most people are um are very sort of accommodating in in the environment that we're currently working in but just you don't want things to distract you so you want to make sure that you stay on topic and that you are not distracted by those other things so make sure that you sort of remove them as much as possible from your environment for the duration of the interview um, in, in regards to that, you want to close all applications running on your device. So if you have email open or if you have other things sort of running on your computer at that time, make sure that you close everything down and only open up, um, you know, the Internet Explorer or Chrome or whatever window um, with the interview link in it so that you're just opening up that um, so you don't have any other distractions sort of popping up on the screen or, or anything along those lines. Um, make sure that you grab a glass of water. I would say absolutely if you are going to be in an interview for um, over an hour, if it's if it's one where there's multiple rounds where you're in that interview for maybe three to four hours, um, make sure that you have a glass of water sitting next to you um, for the interview because you're going to be talking a lot, talking about yourself a lot. You may They may not even give you breaks in between interviewers. So just having that glass of water there where you can take a quick sip, refresh yourself, um, will be really helpful. Um, and then make sure that you silence your cell phone, but make sure that you keep your recruiter's number close. So this is really important. Um, a lot of people, I've heard the advice to, to not even have your cell phone in the room when you interview, um, but for a virtual interview, because there are so many technical issues that could occur, um, having your phone near you is going to be important because even if you don't encounter a technical in issue, your interviewer might. So maybe your interviewer is having trouble with Zoom or trouble with Skype or trouble with their um, internet at their house because everybody's sort of operating in this virtual environment right now. It's possible that someone's internet at home may go out at the time of your interview. So having your phone near you to make sure that if any of those things occur to you or occur for your interviewer, you have a way of, of getting in touch with them. So just make sure that it's on silent and maybe a, away from you so that it's not distracting during the actual interview. But, but as you're getting things started, make sure that it's there in case there are any technical difficulties that happen. Okay, so um, again, this stuff is pretty basic and applies to both virtual interviewing and um, 
in-person interviewing, just make sure that you smile, you're pleasant, you're conversational. Um, don't fidget too much or touch your face. I think it's very easy, especially in a virtual environment, and you'll notice I probably do it more than I should, um, is look at yourself while you're talking. And sometimes when you do that, if you notice there's a hair out of place or if you notice that something isn't the way that you want it to be, um, you may be tempted to sort of go and fix it um, like you're looking in a mirror. Um, but but you know try to be conscious not to do that and also sometimes things on video might be more obvious than what they might be in person so if you're continually touching your face or picking at something um, that may be a little bit more obvious because you're you're on video and you're not necessarily um, in an in-person environment so sort of be conscious of, of that as well uh, make sure you're making eye contact. So again, um, look into the camera. That's going to give the impression that you're actually making eye contact as opposed to sort of like looking down at yourself um, or even looking at your interviewer. Um, it's best to sort of make sure that you're looking into the camera. And to do that, what you can do is, is you should be able to manipulate your screen. And if you can take your the little um, the little image of your interviewer and move it up closer to your camera that will help you to sort of give a better impression if it's if you want to look at them when you're speaking um, that you're looking at them but also um, it appears that you're looking into the camera as well as opposed to if they're sort of if their little video icon is in the lower um, portions of your of your desktop um, so next uh, make make Take your time answering questions. So if you're asked questions, you don't have to have an answer right away. You, you are able to take a moment, think about the question and compose your answer. Um, it's best to answer the question in, you know, um, in the way that the interviewer is looking for you to answer. So if you take a moment and sort of sit back and compose that answer, you're going to produce a, a much stronger answer than what you would have if you just would have had a snap decision on how you wanted to answer that question. So especially some interview questions can be confusing, um, especially if there may be like a language barrier between you and your interviewer or something, it can be sort of difficult to, to understand what is being asked and what that interviewer is looking for. So um, if, if you are confused, definitely ask for clarification. If it sounds like they're asking for something, um, just say, you know, do you mean, um, you know, do you want me to talk a little bit about this experience that I've had or something like that, just to sort of get a yes or no from them. Um, and then that way you know that you're answering the question in the way that they want you to. Um, and then avoid giving yes or no answers. So even if it sounds like your interviewer wants to, a yes or a no, like, um, let me think of a question that is a yes or a no. Um, you know, are you able to work on more than one task at a time? Um, if you say you can say yes to that, and if you if you're able to multitask, definitely say yes to that. But you want to talk about um, either why you enjoy doing that, why you're good at it. You know, maybe multitasking helps you stay fresh with other um, with other things that you have going on. So you're able to work on one project for an hour and then work on another one, and then maybe go back and revisit the original one to help you um, sort of refresh your mind and get a fresh set of eyes on on the work that you did an hour ago. Um, giving sort of examples like that or giving examples of times when you've had to do that in the past. Um, that's definitely really important. In, in There are very few interviews that I think anybody ever wants is going to ask you questions and only want a one word answer. So make sure that you're elaborating as much as you can on um, your experience or um, how you do things um, during the interview process. All right, so um, so we're sort of wrapping things up now. Um, make sure that when you're in the interview, you're taking notes on important details the interviewer is sharing during the interview. Um, this will help when composing your thank you at the, at the end of the interview um, or after the interview. Um, make sure you're asking well thought out questions. So something that I've noticed and students are really listening and, and, and doing a really good job of listening to what their career centers are telling them and what their faculty is telling them and sort of preparing for interviews. Um, but a lot of the questions that that I get at the, at the end of the interview process aren't necessarily questions that students want the answers to. They're questions that I think people have told them um, that they should be following up with. So make sure that the questions that you're asking your interviewer at the end of at the end of an interview are ones that you really want 
the answer to and that you're really interested in knowing what that answer is and not just questions that you've put together because somebody told you that it's important to to have questions ready at the end of an, an interview. Um, and on the next slide, I have some interview question examples there that that you might want to think about and that that may give you answers that you're looking for um, at the end of an interview. Um, in follow up, make sure that you're asking all of your interviewers for their email address. So you want to make sure that you have that so you're able to send a thank you note to everybody that had had interviewed you and taken the time to spend some time with you that day. Um, a quick tip, if you forget, so let's say you interviewed with four people, but you only got two emails um, and you forgot to get it from your other two interviewers. Um, something that you can do is if you have their first name and last name, typically most companies do some combination of their first name, last name, and then at the company name .com. Um, so you can use the format that you've gotten from the other two interviewers and apply it to the other people if you have their, their first and last name. Um, so that way you can send everybody that interviewed you that day a follow-up thank you. Okay, so um, in I just wanted to give you a few ideas of questions to ask to sort of get more information about the company, about the position, um, those types of things. So these aren't sort of hard and fast questions that you need to ask an interviewer, but I do think that these are ones that are going to give you some good insight on what the position is going to be like. Um, so you want to know how success is measured in the position. How are you going to be judged? Um, what are they going to be looking at? Are those, you know, is that something that you're that you're comfortable with and how you're going to be measured in, in, in that role? Um, what are the greatest challenges going to be in this position? Definitely something you want to ask, something that you want to know. Um, you know, going into going into a role, knowing what the challenging pieces of that are going to be is really going to help you prepare um, and be ready to hit the ground running on day one. Um, and then what are the top three skills you're looking for in someone to fill the role? Um, you want to know if there are skills that are needed for that specific role, do you have those skills? If you don't have those skills, is this even a, a role that, that you want to pursue? Is this a best fit for you? Um, so having an understanding of the skills that they're looking for and if you have those skills is going to give you a good idea of, of where you sort of fit in. Um, and then this last one is a question that I really like because it gets your interviewer thinking. Um, but in thinking about the best person you've ever had in this role, what made them the best and what makes their performance stick out in your mind? Um, I think this is a really good one because this sets up this sort of sets apart sort of the individuals that do the position on a daily basis and are just sort of good at the position qualified for the role, but then who does it the best and what do they do to stand out? Because isn't that really what you want to do as well um, in the role? So that gives you a really good idea of, of how to be successful um, in the position and, and if you as a candidate um, could be successful in the position. Okay, so after the interview, something that you want to do, and I want you, this is important information for you to take with you, whether it's virtual interviews, in-person interviews, any of those things. Um, after every interview that you do, take some time and evaluate your performance. This is only going to help you moving forward. So did you do yourself justice? Were you properly prepared? Which questions did you answer well or struggle with? Could you have improved your performance and how? Um, were any gaps in your skills or experience revealed during that process? And how could you do things differently next time? Um, so evaluating all of these things and, and helping yourself to sort of see where improvements can be made is going to help you moving forward. Um, and I, this, this is not advice that is solely for college students, recent college graduates. This is something that I would give Exp this is advice I would give experienced professionals and anybody sort of looking to to change their role um, and anybody looking to sort of start the interview process or start the job search process is make sure that when you're going through this you're evaluating how you've done step by step so that you can improve on your performance when it comes to interviewing. Um, and something else I do want to mention is that during the interview process, the only thing that you really have control over is, is your performance. Um, you will have interviews that you think you knocked the ball out of the park and you did amazing. Um, and the next day you'll get a rejection letter 
and you'll have interviews where you do this evaluation and you were like, wow, I really struggled. I really doubt that they're going to call me back. You're going to get a call back. Um, the only thing that you have any control over is your performance. So my best advice to you in going into the interview process, whether it be in person, whether it be virtual, whether it be over video, is just do the best you can and take the opportunities that you can to evaluate your performance um, and make sure that if you did perform poorly on something, that you take that into consideration and that you really work toward improving that for next time. All right, so that concludes um, my presentation for you all today. So thank you for um, sitting in with me on that. I'm going to close this down and let me see here. I'll stop sharing my screen. And um, if there's anybody that has any questions, now would be um, a good time to go ahead and type them in the chat box. But if nobody has questions, then I can just uh, wrap up here. Um, I will type my email address into the chat box. If anybody wants to follow up with me, if you have any questions, um, I'm happy to, to answer them for you, to take a quick call with you, um, talk you through any sort of interviewing questions that you have. So thank you, everybody.